words today, at one time you were not a people, but now you are God. Amen. My dear Christian friends, Hody Childress was a small town farmer and a retired Air Force veteran on a fixed income. One day, 10 years ago, Childress walked into the Geraldine Drugs in the small store owner, uh, Brooke Walker, and asked her if people ever had any difficulty paying for their prescriptions. Walker said that unfortunately it happened all too often. Childress then handed over a folded up $100 bill and told her, don't tell if they ask, tell them that it was a blessing from the Lord. And then he also asked her not to tell him who the money went to help, to use her discretion. And then Childress faithfully gave a $100 bill at the beginning of every month for 10 years. Until last year when he became too ill and weak to go to the drugstore. And so he finally confided in his daughter and told her what he had been doing. And then asked her to go to the drugstore on his behalf. Childress died this past New Year's Day. And Childress's daughter at his funeral about his anonymous deeds. And from then, people have been coming and telling the family about how much their father had them during the difficult times to pay for prescriptions and then inspired them to pay it forward. As a Christian man, Hody Childress was salt and light in his community. In his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus taught, You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its flavor, how will it become salty again? Then it is no good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled on by people. You are the light of the world. A city located on a hill cannot be hidden. People do not light a lamp and put it under a blanket or under a basket. No, they put it on a stand and it gives light to all who are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine in people's presence so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Salt in Jesus' time was precious. Salt was used to preserve food because there was no refrigeration. Salt was used to disinfect wounds. It was used to wipe over a newborn baby to protect them from various diseases. Egyptians used salt to preserve for mummifications. The Israelites were to use salt on their offerings to purify them before sacrificing them to the Lord. And salt today is still useful stuff. A little bit of salt can season our dish and tickle the taste buds. We've used a lot of road salt the last week as we had all that Oh, last Sunday, and then the accompanying ice after it melts and then refreezes. Light shines and brightens up the darkness, whether that's a little... Lighten up a dark room in Jesus' day, or whether it is the sun shining in the morning, chased away the darkness of night. It is children going throughout the house, turning on every light as they go through the house. And then it is dad doing his fatherly duty of walking through the house and turning off in the house. Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Notice that Jesus does not say you need to work on salting. He doesn't say, you need to become better at shining your light. No, he says, this is what you are through your baptism, through your conversion to Christianity, through your faith in Jesus Christ, who is the true salt and bright light. This is what you are. So be what you are. You are salt of the earth and you are light to the world. 
this world is rotten and corrupt, and it needs to be salted. This world is dark in the sin and death that is all around it, and it needs to be lighted. Friends, when do you encounter the rot and the darkness in our culture? As salt and light Christians, we notice the rot and the darkness we are living in and that we are raising our children in and that we are living in an amoral world. It used to be that we were living in a moral world, meaning that people did plenty of of evil, but they knew and believed in what was right and wrong. But now we are living in an amoral world, a world where people no longer know or believe in what is right or wrong. And so that means that they're only going to do what comes naturally to them and feels good to them. And what comes naturally is evil. And what feels good to our is sin. We are living in a culture that relishes the rot and delights in the darkness. They just don't know any better. They have tasted the tainted garbage for so long that what is good, right, and moral is a shock to their system. They have been dwelling in the shadows of the darkness of their sin and unbelief for so long that when Jesus shines his light into that darkness, it blinds them. Now, those who live in that rot and the darkness. Now they want to pull us as Christians into that. They want us to not only tolerate it and then promote it. They want to drag us down into the darkness and decay. And we fall victim when we become scared of the tactics of Satan and his devilish followers. We're afraid of being called names canceled, prosecuted, persecuted, being classified as unloving, bigoted, or hypocritical. And so then we are tempted to put sugar into our shakers. We are tempted, and then we are in the danger of becoming unsalty. We are tempted to cover over our light under a basket, and then we are in danger of having the light Go out. And that's because we don't want to scare anyone or offend anyone or come across as unloving to anyone. It's much easier for us to mind our own business, to keep quiet and keep to ourselves. It's much more convenient for us to compromise God's truth than to pour out Christ's judgment upon a a rotten world. It's much more pleasant for us to hide in the shadows and then not shine Christ's light into the darkness. It's a whole lot easier for us to just go with the flow than to stand up against the tide, standing on the solid foundation of the cross of Christ. But when we do that, when we cave in, then we are not being Christ has made us to. Or light. Jesus is the salt that preserves your life by pointing out your sins. He is the salt that purifies you with his perfection. He is never going to lose his saltiness. He uses his salt to heal your wounds, both physical and spiritual. He is the salt that prepares your body for death. And for the life that is after death. But while you are here on earth as a Christian, then he seasons your speech with salt. At creation, God did not leave everything in darkness. God let there be light, and he cleaved the darkness with that light. But shortly after that, Adam and Eve fell into sin and they brought the darkness of sin death and un world and since this darkness was not going away jesus jesus christ the son of god stepped into the darkness the scriptures say 
God has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Now that we have been rescued of sin and death and brought into the light of Christ, now we are following light. Jesus teaches, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of light. Fellow saints of God, calls you as you are precious. You serve a purpose. You are baptized to be the salt of the earth. You are baptized to be the light of the world. Jesus does not call you salt because of how much you can do. He calls you salt because of how much he has done for you. He loves you. He declares you forgiven of all of your sins. He has spared you from the punishment of hell. He chases the devil from you. He has rescued you from death. And he has made you his own. And he sets you apart from the rest of the world for his divine purpose. And that divine purpose is to do nothing more than simply let your light shine to be. to let others see what you, what you are and what you to be to let others hear what Jesus so that they hear you tell others how much you love Jesus based on how much Jesus has loved you this is as salt of the earth this is your purpose as light of the world as Jesus has been salt and confronted your sins, now you are to be salt and confront the sins of others. As Jesus has shined the light of the grace of his forgiveness upon you, now you are to shine the grace of his forgiveness upon others. As Jesus has forgiven your sins, now you are given the opportunity to announce that same forgiveness to others who are repentant. And so we Take on this difficult task of being salt in an unsalty world. And even if people do not listen to you, then you have done your duty. Then you have fulfilled your purpose. Then you have honored what Christ has made you to be. But when you do not do that, then there is the very real danger of standing there on judgment day and hearing those on the left saying to you, they never told me. And then hearing the curse of Jesus that he says on the Sermon on Mount, it is no good for anything except thrown out and trampled by men. As Christian parents, Christian citizens, as members of the Holy Christian Church, be a part of the counterculture to shine the light of Christ into the shadowy corners of the world and to shine that light into the dark recesses of people's souls. You are. So be the light of Christ. Be light that reflects the light of the sun. St. Peter also says, after many decades after he had heard Jesus' sermon on the mount, the Holy Spirit inspires him to write, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, the people who are God's own possession so that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. And notice how each one of those terms that Peter calls you is plural. Not a chosen person, a royal priest, a, a holy person, a, people who are, a person who is God's own possession. It's all plural. You are salt, not one single grain of salt. You are light, not one single flame of light. You are salt together. Salt together is more powerful. You are brighter, shines brighter. God has created us to come together. And what is that purpose of coming together? To declare the praises of him who called. The best place to do that is inside the sanctuary of the Christian church. You have been called out, set apart, chosen for a purpose. Wherever God has shaken you out, in your home, in your classroom, in your workplace, in your community, there you are salt seasoning your little part of God's kingdom. 
Wherever God has placed you in the shadows, there you are light, shining the light of Christ in the darkness that threatens to envelop those whom you love. This is your identity. This is your calling. This is your purpose. It is consistent with whom Christ has made you to be. And this is only for those whom God has called to be his chosen possessions, his children through Christ Jesus. Because the Holy Spirit has enlightened you in Christ, now you are to be whom Christ has created. Your light shine. St. Peter says, live an honorable life among the Gentiles so so that even though they slander you as evildoers, when they observe your noble deeds, they may glorify you, they may glorify God on the day he visits us. Brooke Walker, the owner of Geraldine Drugs, said about Hody Childress, his kindness motivated me to be more of a compassionate person. He was just such a good old guy who wanted to bless his community, and he certainly did. He established a legacy of kindness. And that drugstore has now set up the Hody Childress for other people to donate towards. Fellow chosen people of God, may we also be salt and light that when others experience our saltiness, when they witness, our lights, that they may glorify Jesus Christ, that they may join together in praising our Father in heaven. So together we pray today that we be what Christ has made us to be, salt and light. Amen.